Okay, welcome to this video. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here in Studio One Six, which helps with organizing um, your tracks and your song structure when you're writing a song in Studio One. I've got a song loaded up here that I've been working on. Let's before I get in, let's have a quick listen to um, what this sounds like. It's just basically some bass, a drum pattern. This is kind of the verse that we're listening to and you'll notice this carries on for a little bit longer and then we're going to break into a chorus that stops around here into the chorus starting now okay start changing rhythm different notes different chords eventually and all that so that's how it works and then the chorus goes on for a while and then we're going back to another verse and so on i'll just stop the playhead so that's kind of what we're dealing with it's not particularly long and it's certainly not finished i've just got those two two tracks down but it's enough for me to be able to demonstrate to you what i want to for this video so let's start with clicking up here the global track visibility uh, click on that and you've got a few options i want to show you the marker this is really handy so when i've zoomed out and as i'm sort of putting this together you'll notice all I can see is draw, 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 which is kind of a bit annoying because I, I have to zoom in quite far before I can start to see the actual pattern names at the top. Now, that might be partly down to me just giving them very long pattern names. I may have learned a lesson in doing that. But in order to be able to see where you're at within the timeline of the song at a glance, these markers are really useful. So up here, once you've clicked on the markers, so you click on marker there it brings down a little panel here and if you go put the playhead so i'm going to put a playhead there where the first first starts click plus and it puts a little number two if you double click in there you can give it a better name than number two so i'm going to say actually i'm going to call it yeah verse one let's go with that i know for a fact that verse one continues until here where then the first chorus comes in so i'm going to click plus again uh Double click and I'm going to click uh, chorus one. It's the first chorus. There will be more than one chorus. The chorus is quite long. It's like a two part affair. And let me just zoom in and see when it ends. Da -da -da. Yeah, it ends here. This is when the V drums, the verse drums start again. So, you know, I'm going to continue with this. Instead of a number four, I'm going to put in verse two. And there's actually, um, let's see, C drums, the chorus here, look. So let's put another one, plus this is some chorus two. Helps if you can spell, there we go. Um, the chorus goes on for a while, and then we get this middle, I'm calling it the middle A, I don't really know what it is, but it changes, it's slightly different, so if we just play it does this. Changes key. Go down to a F sharp minor and so on. And it doesn't sound amazing with just the bass, but I was playing earlier with a guitar, playing along to it. It does change there. This is the middle eight. So I'm going to just put a little thing in for that too. Plus, so it wants to be number six, but I want to call it middle eight. I'll just stop it there because I mean I'm not too far from the end, but you get the you get the idea. You can just keep putting bits in like that. There's another, I think there's another uh, verse and chorus possibly, and then it's the end of the song. Okie doke. So that's the um, markers, and they're really useful because at a glance now, even if I'm kind of zoomed out quite far, I can see the, you know, the markers there and I can read them. So that's cool. 